you know we're big on doing training with our clients. So I think our clients are well positioned for this. I think that if you're going to sell systems, and forget if it's hydronic or not, the more you can know about that building envelope, the better equipped you are to handle that consumer, that builder, whatever the case may be. You know, take it, take it off the equipment. Don't be focused on BTUs. They don't know what that means. Focus yeah. again on the comfort, the efficiency, the environmental quality, and upfront about costs. Give them yeah. here is option A. You know, like which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the deluxe or do you want to be the statistic? Do you want yeah. to see Mike or do you not want to see Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely right. You know, and the and those headaches, you know, when Mike shows up, that's just the beginning. Yeah. I don't get right? called to see good stuff. It's pretty rare people <laughs> say, right. hey, Mike, drive two hours and check out this cool system. They just send me a picture. And yeah. I go sweet and I put it on my LinkedIn or put it on social media. I share it with you and Siggy and we love it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I so um Part of what you know, we would spend a lot of time going back to selling hydronics and integrated knowledge and all of that was teaching our clients um, to express expectations and knowing when to get involved and knowing when not to get involved. So when we were dealing with engineers, for example, they wanted to get involved, right? So their ex their their so we taught them to express their expectations. So here's a here's a typical thing that we would teach them we would say have them say to the builder and the architect and the mechanical contractors that we want to put in a 97 percent efficient boiler and we want you to demonstrate that we're going to achieve that 97 percent so that's our expectation and here's our knowledge to get that 97 percent efficient we need water temperatures coming back at around 80 degrees fahrenheit how are you going to do it that's mm -hmm. my expectation. Now it's your job to fill it out, right? We we now so we would teach them how to express expectations for lighting, sound, odors, vibration, thermal comfort, air quality, right? And then once they were able to express that expectation and then they handed it off to the design team, now the responsibility was in the design team and no longer in their hands. And if the sound sucked, if the air quality sucked, if the Vib if there was vibrations, if there was an odor, whatever that came from, not my issue. I told you my expectations. You failed it. Now it's your problem, not mine. Fix it, yeah. right? Yeah. If someone wanted to get into the nitty gritty, like they actually wanted to get into the specifics, well, then we would tell them, as soon as you move from expressing expectations to now actually driving design, because you're an engineer or whatever, you have an interest in design, well, then expect to take responsibility right yeah that's fair and if you want to and if you want to take on that responsibility you know great like we're doing a full renovation here in this farm yard farmhouse and you know we have enough skills to take the building up to a certain place our ability is to do construction because of our experience as in, in my history as a tradesperson and then into construction engineering mechanical i can take it up to a certain level right but at some point, I have to hire somebody to take it up from my abilities up to the professional level. So in other words, we did 80% of the painting in this project, but we hired a professional to finish it off, right? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it just so happens on this particular project that we had uh, some railings that were put in. Our expectations were that they were supposed to look like furniture. We wanted the staining to be professionally done. So we didn't do the staining because we're not we're not professional stainers. We, we don't have the technique, we don't have the skills, we don't have the knowledge. So we hired somebody to do that. Well, they failed. Not my problem. We expressed our expectations and now the problem's in their hand. They have to fix it, right? Yeah. But if I told them what stain to use, what technique to use, the, all the strategy, well, now the problem's mine. Well, so don't take on responsibility, and this is our advice to our clients, don't take on responsibility for those things that you know nothing about, but you can yeah, I certainly, I'm never looking for a builder to tell me how to design a system, but you have, there's a gray there because you want to have a collaborative discussion as you've just identified. There's nothing wrong with feedback. There's nothing wrong with discussions. But, you know, as I like to joke as we're talking with customers, uh, I don't do my own surgery, right? So if my arm falls off, I'm not putting it back on. So I would also question why is the dentist, doctor, postman, factory worker telling me how to do my job? 
right? Mm -hmm. You're you're not qualified, or you would be doing my job. And yeah. I think outlining expectations both ways is a great way to build trust with that builder and with that end user. Yeah, for sure.